so this is my book, Sister Mischief. Thank you for uh, sharing that it is, in fact, the world's first interracial gay hip hop love story for teens. And uh, in it, 16 year old Esme Rocket comes out of the closet, falls in love with her hot Bengali co MC, and uh, they form an all girl hip hop group called Sister Mischief. They also form a student group at their school devoted to queer hip hop inquiry or inquiry uh, called 4 H Hip Hop for Heteros and Homos. <laughs> and, uh, so in the chapter that I wanted to read, I've noticed that there's some identity politics flying around in this room tonight, and I think that's awesome. And so just to sort of throw my two cents into that pile, this is a post-breakup conversation, you know, one of those really fun, like, I need to get my shit back, we need to, like, work some shit out kind of conversations, only they're 16, so it's, like, a really big deal. Um, so, uh, yeah, so this is, this is it. <clears throat> there is Rowie's driveway, looking prone and open-hearted under the streetlights. I scan the windows for movement, hoping everyone is, isn't asleep already. Sure enough, I see her mom in her study, reading under a green desk lamp. Collecting all my moxie, I tow up the stone steps and rap lightly on the door, seeing Priya's head twitch at the noise. She ties her robe and comes to the door. Esme, she ex exclaims, pushing open the glass door and motioning me inside. What are you doing prowling the cold streets so late? Get out of the winter. Oh, I'm just restless, I say. How are you, Dr. R? Oh, Esme, I'm fine, she says, hugging me. How are you? The look she gives me suggests she knows what she's asking. I'm... I don't finish. I've missed you. Rowie appears at a yellow nighty at the top of the stairs behind her. Well, Dr. Priya Rudra watches us, watching each other. There's chai on in the kitchen if you girls want some. I'll be reading. Don't stay up too late. She begins to say something else and then stops herself. It's lovely to see your face, Esme. You're always welcome here. Her petite feet recede, padding down the hall. Here are Rowie and me, confronted with each other. No escape to be had. Hi, she says. Hi, I say. How are you, she says. I'd be better if I had some chai tea, I reply, making a bloodless attempt at a smirk. I can do that. She looks more at ease with a task to perform, and I follow her into the kitchen. For a moment, we don't talk as she lifts the wire tea strainer out of the pot and pours two mugs of tea. Except for us, the kitchen is asleep, off duty for the night, streetlight glinting off the little spoons in the spice bowls. I sit in the breakfast nook with my steaming mug. When she sits, it's half in the shadow. So, I say. So, she says. You're probably wondering why I'm here, I begin carefully. A little, she says, blowing on her tea. I'll just put you out of your suspense now. I, I don't totally know why I'm here. You don't have to, she says. We look down in our cups for a second, silent. I feel, I feel like there are some conversations we never finished, I decide. I do too, she says, and it shoots straight through me. You do? I mean, I didn't really think I'd never talk to you again. She pulls back a step. Yeah, but I gotta be honest, I don't really know what to say right now, I say. My heart is pounding. An icon of Rama and Sita hangs above Rowie's bare, winking shoulder. The fridge clicks on, rupturing the velvety silence. My eyes dart back to Rama and Sita, his blue face and her serene gaze, and I feel suddenly ashamed not to know anything about their story. I point. So what's the deal with Rama and Sita again? I ask her. All I know is that they're like Hindu, Hindu star-crossed lovers or whatever. She tips her head right, craning to search the portrait behind her. It's just like all the other pre-colonial love stories, she says with a shrug. Native empire and divine right and women being sold for land and power and shit. There's like this really long, complicated plot about Sita being the, the daughter of the king of Adeha and Rama being blue and divine and winning a contest to marry her and ascend the throne. And then Rama's evil stepmother wants her son to marry Sita instead. And Rama has to go through this long, complicated pursuit of her after she's kidnapped. And there's a lot of birds and deer and forests and fire and questions of purity and shit. She takes a breath. It's like, no one ever asks the chick what she wants in these stories. No one asks them if they want to be auctioned off and chased through forests. I mean, maybe she doesn't even really like him that much. Maybe she just wanted to kick it casual. Maybe she doesn't want to deal with all the hassle or something. I don't know how to respond, so I take a blind swing at the elephant in the room. So what's up with you and your boyfriend, Prakash? Her eyes flash at me. She meets mine in a gaze of shock, then shifts her sight out the window. I don't know. It just feels uncomplicated. Uncomplicated? Please don't start. Because he's Indian, just because he's Indian and a dude? 
Yes, she snaps, lowering her voice. Okay, yes, it's just easier. Fuck Esme. I get dressed in the morning and I'm disappointing my parents. They were sad when I never wanted to go back to India with them. They were sad the first time I talked back to them like an American kid. They were sad when I never wanted to introduce them to my friends because I was afraid people would laugh at their accents. It's just complicated. And Prakash just magically understands you because he's had some of those experiences. He understands you because he makes more visual sense as the other half of the picture. Are your parents even happy you're dating? I thought they didn't want you to. They're not unhappy, she says. Yeah, I shoot back. Well, are you happy, Rowie? Guess what? This is some post-colonial shit right here. This is the part of the story where someone asks you what you want. All you do is talk about what your parents want. So what is it you want, anyway? I mean, really want, like a fist in the gut kind of wanting. What do you really, really want? How in the hell can you expect me to know the answer to that question? She hisses through gritted teeth, her voice clouding. Don't you get it? This thing with Prakash, whatever it is, it, it buys me time. It's gonna be different in a few years, like college and not living with my parents and, you know, time and space for whatever. I let her words set in for a minute. We don't talk. Do you ever wonder what it is we're all making college out to be, I ask slowly. It's like this great escape, the way we're all looking at it, this magic time when we can be whoever and do whatever we want. I'm just wondering kind of why we can't be who we are and do what we're going to do now. Because we're sheltered, she shrugs. I guess, I say, but that isn't really good enough, is it? I mean, everything moves so fast, and yet not fast enough. Do we really have time to wait to be ourselves? Esme, she says quietly. I'm not you. I, I don't think I'm as much like you as you think I am. I don't think I'm your, the same as you or something. Do you really think that, I ask? Or do you just think you're supposed to think that? I really don't think we look so bad together. How do you know, she whispers. No one ever really saw. The wind kicks up outside. I hear my bike topple over. I don't know how to respond to her. If a tree comes out to an empty forest, is the tree still gay? And where is this empty place anyway, this place that no one sees, this place where things crash but don't resound into all the other places? The crash happened. I know it happened. Questioning whether it happened or not this late in the game makes me feel insane. It's the same old impasse, I observe, wanting to feel colder about it than I do. Yeah, she agrees, it is. I don't want to pursue you past the point that you want to be pursued. Yeah, she takes a slow breath. There are other things that I want, you know. Like what? Like to make music, to write lyrics again, maybe to be a part of you and Marcy's little Holy Hill queer hip hop revolution. We don't take maybe members, I say haughtily. I didn't mean that, I'm sorry, that was dick. You're, really, you're just, you're hard to get at sometimes, Rowie. Sorry, she says, look, I know. And I'm really sorry for everything that happened with us. I just wish that things could be like they were before, before everything got so messy. Love is messy, I say. There's no love without the mess of it. Serious, she says. But we used to be able to pound out the truth somehow. Writing and performing with you made me feel better about things. God, I loved being on stage with you, you know, I tell her. It made me feel invincible. It just made me feel like we were charting a course and the world just had to fucking suck it up and follow us wherever we wanted to take them. But I think part of that was feeling like we had a secret, like we knew something they didn't. Like we had a secret chemistry. I think we'll always have a secret chemistry, she intones. Or like, we'll always be MC Rohini and MC Ferocious together. We rhyme, I say, because it's true. Look, there's this song I've been working on that's sort of about you or whatever. Yeah, she says. Can I hear it? I guess so, I agree, feeling nervous. I mean, it's not done and it needs a chorus. It's just like a bunch of verses right now. Yeah, because you suck at writing choruses, she says, grinning. Yeah, I say, okay, here goes. This one time I tried getting with a guy. I tried it, didn't buy it, couldn't fly in a lie. He was a cramped backseat in an indie rock blare. It was so hard to believe I was supposed to be scared. Because I've spent my whole life trying to be bigger than one. Like I could up and make the earth revolve the sun. Something about that wanting makes a girl feel invisible. Divisible, is it though? I want to get physical with an unfuckwittable. Visible mistress who feels my kind of blue. Listen, I don't care who. Let's screw through curfews. Show me who soon. Is it you? Is it you? Girl of my dreams, cool as the moon. You've got to come soon because I want to get with you, boo. 
There's a girl who gets me all raucously, raucously nauseous. Ferocious is audacious, but my object is cautious. Still, when this girl blushes, it twists me and thrushes. All flustered and hushing, the lushness of lusting. What a rush I want to touch, all her luscious erupting. God, her flush gets me gushing. I'm loving like busting. We're hushing, she's blushing. I'm mushy, I'm crushing. I can tell that Rowie's face looks a little melty by the time I finish, but neither of us can hold eye contact. That was super emo, she says, trying for sarcasm, but failing to conceal a sniffle. <clears throat> I know, I say. It would, it would make me really happy if we could rhyme together again, Rowie says, even if we can't do all the things we used to do. Sister Mischief was like the best thing I've ever done, and hip hop for heteros and homos. Yeah, I nod, that would make me happy too. It's funny how, at least for me, I started off more interested in pissing off Holy Hill than anything else. But all of a sudden we had this queer hip-hop movement, you know, that I really cared about. And you were a big part of that. I've been thinking a lot about what queer means, Roe muses. Maybe I could help you come up with a chorus for that song you just showed me. I'm thinking we could do something with, like, queer as the central rhyme. Yeah? I like that. You know the story I told you about Rama and Sita? It's actually only part of the story of how Hinduism conceives gender. It's actually a lot more complicated. There are sort of different interpretations, but a lot of the gods are neuter or even female. That's interesting, I say. But what's your point? I mean, why, why did you just tell me that? I don't know, she shrugs. I just think it's kind of interesting that I come from some place where the divine can be as ambiguous as real life. It's just something I've been thinking about a lot lately, trying to figure out how I feel about everything that's happened. I pause. I've really missed you, Rowie. I've missed you too. She says, as I'm, I'm really sorry, I couldn't, I'm really sorry. I know, I say, and I think we should try just being friends. You better suit up right, girl, because 4-H is about to go balls to the wall. Ovaries to the wall, motherfucker, she corrects me, hinting at, the, at a grin. I smile for the first time in this kitchen. The reconstitution of our rectangle, because Sister Mischief was never, ever about squares. Makes me feel like things are making some kind of sense again. Our fourth corner is back on board. Nice editorial, by the way, I say, I say with a smirk. Oh, she looks embarrassed. Yeah, I guess that was my way of contributing to everything you guys were stirring up. Well, I lower my voice to fill her in. Just wait until you hear what we're rigging up next. This shit is about to fly off the chain. Thank you.